Welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving. This is episode 144 of the Bash Mania podcast. I am super excited for today's episode. Coffee Talk with Chenzo, Jason Nolf. Going to be a great episode. Before we dive into the conversation, I just want to let you guys know this episode is brought to you by our friends at Attack, A-T-A-C, Attack. And it was an awesome week for Attack. A couple days ago, they announced that they launched a new version of their app. 30 plus new exercises, all new comparison tool where you can see how you stack up against others and yourself to improve the weakest aspects of your game. There's super cool new features here where you can change muscle groups and exercises. You can customize your attack, how you want to attack fitness, nutrition, mental growth, physical growth, all that. It's super cool. As I've said before, it's a trainer in your pocket. So I'm super excited to roll out. I've had a busy couple of days preparing for Thanksgiving, other things. Tomorrow morning, Thanksgiving, I'm starting this new training regimen. I can't wait to see how it is. I'm super excited for it. I need to get back in shape. So guys, download Attack ATAC. Follow them on social. They have all sorts of cool ambassadors and athletes they're working with. They're putting money back in wrestlers' pockets. I always love to see that. So download the Attack app, A-T-A-C, Attack, in the Apple App Store today. Is it I okay love if I this. sit right here? Sit wherever hey. you want. Yeah, where are you? I'm at Bo's Gym, American Top Team. Oh, how is it? I, I haven't seen it on the inside. It's real nice. This is the upstairs wrestling room. Tell Brian that he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is where we're doing the photo shoot. So I have my vest on. Let me Dude, that try to nice. sweet. Yeah, this is just upstairs. There's a there's a sauna upstairs in the locker room, showers, uh the base uh the not the basement, but the first floor has uh jujitsu mats, mats and more heavy bags. Um I think there's pull up bars. Pretty cool. What hey, real quick, are you up to? Real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh you know, I know you're doing your photo shoot. I just want to say that the Rudis just sent uh, us a bunch of wrestling shoes. So shout out Rudis for sending California RTC <laughs> yeah. wrestling shoes. Yeah, that's nice. Dude, those I, are, dude they're great shoes, man. They're great that's shoes. That's nice of them. My bash loyalty is currently open. So whoever sends, <laughs> like, I have shelf space. I actually have a pair of shoes. Hold on, I'll get them real quick. <laughs> Love up, it. <laughs> How's uh how's the gym? You uh you trained some striking? I did striking and it's exhausting. We literally uh I I was taking like two weeks off wrestling, mm-hmm. and I came here because I still wanted to train something. And For sure, it was like get after it right away. Ton's a striking coach, and we and and Marcel's the jujitsu coach coach. And we literally came in and it was like we were doing like a two hour practice, and we started going as hard as we could like right off the bat. I'm like. <laughs> This is not how I'm used to. Like I'm used to like playing wrestling, like mm-hmm. warm, taking like 30 minutes to get into the flow of things. But it was like, all right, we're sparring right now. I was like, oh my gosh, like put this dummy on the ground and beat the crap out of it. Yeah, it's like, a dummy named Bo. Yeah, oh. yeah. These are those no are, joke. These are those are awesome. These those are were, old school. These yeah. were my high school wrestling shoes. Those shoes are worth a lot of money. These were my high school wrestling shoes before I really even know who Cal yeah. was. Yeah, was oh, really? Before I knew who he was. Wild. Wow. Then he became a client, a friend. There you this are. History. You guys want to say hi to Maddie? Definitely. Oh, for sure. Yo, She's Maddie. Nolf. Awesome. <laughs> Mrs. Nolf, what's up? She just goes right to work. Hey. Yeah, she's she working. And she she's was working. even in a photo shoot I saw. Yeah, I saw she, she was. We, uh, Jakara and Macy were... Uh, our, our MIA. And, uh, they, so Maddie, Scrap Life needed some more detail shots. So we're, uh, we had what to a workhorse Maddie. she is. I know. Yeah. She does it with a smile on her face, too. That's the that's the best part about it. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Let's, all right. So let's, have her home. let's talk some wrestling. Let's go back to this weekend. First of all, I want to talk about Nolf's wrestling coming up. Chenzo, did Shane Griffith have two? If you have to ask, you don't watch wrestling. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course you do. I mean, they, not not from that referee or, you know, at that venue. But, yeah, I mean, a, a, anywhere else. I mean, if Penn State's wrestling in Carver, that's two. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought that was one of the most ridiculous wrestling calls I've ever seen. How do you think you handled it as a coach? Like, that's your first, like, what a terrible call as a coach. Um, 
I think I did a good job. I didn't really get on the ref and tell him that he sucks or he's doing a bad job or anything. Did you want just, to? <laughs> yeah, I really did. Um, and Jason, we've had that guy. We've had that guy a bunch of times. He used to do a wrestle offs and stuff like that. And oh, I thought yeah, he wrestle offs. Yeah, and I, you know, he he's done a lot of refereeing in state college, so I've seen him a bunch of times. Um, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes you don't get the call you want. Um, I think you know just next time we just uh can't let ourselves be in that position where we need a late takedown to, to win the match you know we need to be you know going from the get-go how was shane's perspective after the match i think he was fine he was fine you know i even heard hasn't complained about the call one time you know he he understands he needs to get on his offense quicker and uh just finish cleanly and you know that's what we're working on fans seem to care so much more than you guys do about like a bad call like you guys all seem when you get a bad call to let it go. Fans will talk yeah. about it for two weeks in a row. <laughs> I mean, look, I can talk about Jaden getting hit for stalling twice in the first period without Yanni taking an actual leg attack. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, there was definitely some bad calls there that, you know, and we were definitely still, you know, I still don't agree with a lot of it. Right. But uh, you know, you, you live and you learn, you can't go back and re wrestle the match and, we don't want to either. You know, we got Vegas. We'll see those guys again in Vegas. We'll see him at the scuffle. And, you know, the goal is not – the goal for Shane Griffith isn't to beat Julian Ramirez, right? Shane Griffith wants to win a national title. If that involves beating Julian Ramirez, then that's part of the goal. But if not, the goal is to win a national title. It's not. We're not seeking out these people just because, you know, we lost to them maybe because of a bad call or maybe because, you know, we didn't get to what we needed to get to. It's, it's just part of the game. I I'm think all... you, you, you see it all the time. Like, people – lose to somebody they shouldn't lose to in the beginning of the year and then they come back i mean chenzo you had that happen uh, a couple yeah. times you lost to a stanford guy yeah um, i saw him last weekend what's, what's <laughs> yeah Same subject i see i see him on the wall every day that's funny yeah i'm <laughs> on the wall every day and then you went and won national title carter lost to donnell washington mm -hmm. came back won national title mark lost first round uh first match at iowa to who was alex meyer came back yep. won national title so like even the penn state guys that you know, are struggling right now. I always, I just tell them, I said, like, it's good to like have examples of great wrestlers that went before you to like look at and gain inspiration from, mm -hmm. uh, because like, it doesn't really matter what happened in the beginning of the year. It's just what, what matters at the end of the year. Yeah. And I agree. And it's, it's good. It's giving us some stuff to work on. Right. So we can, uh, specify our training a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's no big deal. And none of my guys really are, were like too beat up or like you know shaken up about it they understood you know they need to do better in certain areas and they're hungry to get better and it's pretty awesome you guys have always done good too all penn state of like peaking in march nobody really cares but the fans about a bad loss or a loss that shouldn't happen whatever um you mentioned cklv i'm actually looking into heading out for that i literally yeah, was should. just looking at travel last night there's so many people there that should be a good weekend. So I am looking into that, that same week, Jason, you're heading to Russia. Whoa, link. How did that even come about? Whoa, link seven. <laughs> I got a, I got a text from Kyle Snyder. He's one of my best friends here. Um, Man. and he just said, Hey, would you want to be, would you be interested in going to wrestle in Russia? Like at the end of November. And I was like, of course. Um, so we kind of started the process and it was going to be me, him, and Zane all going. And then they moved the tournament back to uh, – the wall link was always in December, but the, the original tournament on Russia and Dagestan, like the Mahashkala or whatever, was supposed to be November 30th or some, something along that line. So they moved it back. Uh, we had to do a different tournament, and the tournament was supposed to be the 3rd and the 4th of December. So then – uh, we said we weren't going to be able to stay for the match uh, because the match is the seventh, uh, the uh, one link lake. And um, so Kyle thinks they moved the tournament back a week so that we could go and wrestle in the match and in the tournament. That's uh, a tournament. The tournament's the weekend after that third, fourth. Yeah. It's so like Zane, Zane can't go. Zane right. Definitely can't Zane's go wedding's that. the 11th. And I felt right. really bad. I had to, I had to talk to Zane. I'd be like, dude, like I can't go either. Yeah. I was I like, I want to be like, there. I want to be there too. Jason, I'm sure you remember when you got married, how hectic like the couple of weeks leading up to the wedding is. I, yeah. Even when you told me that like Zane was initially going to go and I'm thinking about when his wedding is, I'm like, 
that's ballsy to go <laughs> that close. Move. That's an absolute yeah. move, though. To go that close to your wedding, I think it's a yeah. testament to how much he loves to compete that it's like, hey, babe, deal with everybody. I'm going to go <laughs> compete in Russia for a week or so and then come back. That's nuts. Yeah, that would have been fun. And then uh, the tournament was supposed to be the 9th and the 10th. Uh, and then they they moved it to the 10th and the 11th. And our, we had already booked our flights to fly back the 11th. So Varner reached out to the guy in Russia. was like, hey, like, <laughs> and then the, the, the Russian, the Russians moved it to a one day tournament now. So now it's just All for the you guys. They just, they just want North and Snyder man there. Well, That's they it. said, that, what, what they said was the, the Russian said, we told all of Dagestan that Snyder is coming. So did they like, <laughs> did they DM him? Uh, he has a friend there. I can't remember who his friend is, but we were looking to compete. Oh, his name is uh, no, That's his friend. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. So we were looking to compete, and uh, there wasn't another tournament until January, but I wanted no. to compete like now. So he reached out to his friend in Dagestan and said, hey, are there any tournaments? Uh, so this one's not on UWW. But then – You think that dude will wrestle? I'm sorry to keep changing. Is that Yeah. He won't be there. He um, shows up to Worlds. Euros yeah. and so Worlds. I think Kyle is wrestling in the the league. Kyle is wrestling the backup guy, who I think was a U23 world champ at 92 kilos, or maybe 97 kilos okay. the year that oh. – or something like that. I think their backup's pretty good. So they have I, really good backups at every weight. Yeah. And I'm wrestling Sabalov at That's freaking 70, good. At 74 plus three kilos. So I'll have to make one, 169. I'll have to make. Mm-hmm. And then for the tournament, I'm wrestling 74 and they give you two kilos. So oh, nice. that'll be 167. That answers my next question of what weight you're wrestling. That's what I was going to yeah. say. So are you going to try to compete at 74 moving forward? That's the plan right now. Yeah. My my weight, uh, I was pretty light for the world team trials. I didn't cut any weight. Um, and then after the trials, I actually gained another like six pounds. I was trying to gain weight before the trials. It wasn't happening. And then I gained weight after the trials. So now it's getting a little bit harder to get back down to 74. Um, but I think that's my best weight. I'm definitely heavier probably, than you now, though. What when do you, you go weigh? Back and, I'm probably like a buck 80. That's what I weigh. I'm we go back eight. and forth a lot. We take turns of who's heavier. <laughs> or Chenzo is he was saying he wanted to go down to 70 kilos and start competing again. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. In the in the spring, that's where I was. Now I'm like, ooh, 79. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Jason, in the spring, I was looking at that. You were telling me too that I didn't really think about it when we were first talking about you competing, that you've only had two international matches. Yeah. I, That's I, wild. I, I never like thought about that. But well, if you include the Egyptian that I wrestled in the Bill Farrell the year that Chenzo hurt my knee, uh, then that's three. <laughs> oh, I don't want to throw that. I don't want to throw that at you there. Shots fired. I I was there. I remember oh. that like it was yesterday. I felt so bad. Oh my god. I felt like the biggest jerk in the tournament. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. It was uh, a big deal to me because it was a big deal to me. Then you wrestled Imar next, right? And nobody yeah. knew that you had like tweaked your knee, and everybody's yeah, like, I "Oh, I'm I so I much better." And I'm just sitting there, like, I was there, and I'm like, in my head, like, his knees messed up. But you don't say anything. But all the Twitter people, social media, they're all like, "Ooh, this is... it's annoying." Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I was like, it was funny. Did I tell you that story? Was I? Did I tell you that story on Bash Mania before the last time? Which one? Well, uh, so I hurt my knee. I tore my MCL. And uh, we go back and there's a doctor there and he tries to tape my knee up and he tapes my knee up and it does nothing for me. Like he's like, well, he basically <laughs> says like, Hey, you can't wrestle, uh, but I'm going to tape your knee up. And I'm like walking around and I'm like, my knee is still loose. This tape has done nothing. So Kyle Snyder was like, Hey, I'll tape it up. I know how to tape a knee. <laughs> so, so we're what in the back room at the Bill Farrell and he's taping my knee up and I'm like, this feels nice. Like this feels solid. And I'm like, I still can't <laughs> wrestle. But there was rumors that like Martinez had got hurt (laughs) also. So I'm like, man, I'm going to play this mind game. Like I'm going to go out there and like pretend like, like I did everything in my power to like not show any limp 
like I was like, I was walking so slow, but I was like trying not to limp <laughs> so hard. And I walked out there. I'm like, okay, I don't think he's going to go out there and wrestle. Like, cause the, the winner of that match got a spot in the Olympic trials and I had, I hadn't qualified yet. So I go out there and, and like, I thought his shoulder was hurt right away. He digs a deep underhook, like starts like, I'm like, oh, his shoulder's not hurt. He might've been hurt a little bit, but uh, I was like, there's no way that like, like some people were trying to make it seem like it was extreme. And I know he ended right. up getting like surgery on it. Um, but yeah, like he like took he me down. I think he forward me to turn me. And then I was like, all right, I'm not giving up at this point. Like, my, my goal was like, <laughs> just to like play the mind game and then to forfeit if he was going to wrestle. But at that point I was like, you know, maybe I'll throw a headlock and pin him. You never know. So that would have been I mean, wild. You saw I got been, pretty cool. But I, like just the whole time I was not planning on wrestling. So that was, that was pretty funny, but Kyle did tape my knee up and then we found a knee pad from like some, like it was an old sweaty knee pad. It stunk so bad. <laughs> and then we just put it over my knee and I'm like, all right, let's see how it goes. You don't even know who it was? No. <laughs> no. That's wild. And it's funny, too, because, like, you know, whether you're at 74, you have Dake, 79 Burroughs. Like, to make the world team now, you have to not only beat the best guy in the country, but the reigning world champ. Like, you got to beat a world champ to make the team. Does that change your training at all at this point? Like, for an individual or just – does that matter? Um, there's always things that I'm working on things that are exposed in those matches uh, that don't get exposed in matches that I just win 10 to zero. Um, so it definitely like, I definitely make adjustments from those matches and it's, I mean, but that's what makes wrestling fun. Like I'm, I don't really like, I just want to go be the best and to be the best, you got to beat the guys that, you know, are, are the reigning world champs. And, um, but I mean, it's just part of it. I, yeah. I've, I've always kind of been like, I don't view myself as an underdog, but I've always like going into high school. I was never like ranked number one in the country, uh, like going into until I, until I was my senior year. So, um, there was always guys that I had to beat and like along the path. And that's just part of wrestling. Like this is just part of the path. Do you, you know, a... I, um, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. I actually, I was watching a match the other day and it was, uh, me and you wrestling at Virginia beach. And it was the first time I, I saw you do your front flip out of a double leg. You bumped up was, to wrestle me. Mm -hmm, and it was against <laughs> <Matty> me. <boy. laughs> and it was and it was against me. I had a clean double and he just did a flip out of it and then he ran out of bounds. And I remember we're on the edge, you go out of bounds, and then you said hi Chenzo, and then you like <laughs> pushed my head and then you ran in bounds. And I was like, this freaking guy. <laughs> but yeah, like that's just what that reminds me of whenever I think of us in high school. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fun match. We uh, we had some. I, you're like one of the, the favorite people that you're. You're one of my favorite partners. I feel like me too. You're like yeah, the best partner I've had to train with at Penn State. Like my people man. always, ask, who's your favorite training partner? And like you're always up there. Like I, I always like going with Conway too because he was smaller than me, and I could kind of like if I needed to throw him down. <laughs> throw you him can. Down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, nah. I, you know. I, uh, I, I like wrestling practice. I think I have a good flow. <laughs> I like practice. Um, no, we've just been working out together since we were eight. So it's just like, you know, we just have a good flow. There we go. But yeah, um, I tell people that all the time too, that, you know, I would work out with you a lot and just, we go through a lot of different shit and that's kind of what just helps you get good at wrestling. Yeah. Like I think we, we were, we were at practice one better. time. We were at practice one time in high school. We were at Young Guns and, I show him this like overhook, like, like, you know, like step behind thing. And then he hits it on me in live 20 minutes later. <laughs> That's like yeah. being, being coachable, man. Yeah. So like That's every it. time I learn something, I like try to hit it right away. And you did. Yeah. yeah. It makes That's sense. Fine. But I mean, I think I asked you guys both on different episodes of this podcast, like after you guys wrestled with the Bill Farrell, how was it? Cause the fans were so much like, when you root for a team like Penn State and then all of a sudden two Penn State guys wrestle, it causes like this level of internal chaos. And, and much like a bad call for you guys, it wasn't a big deal. Like you're wrestling and, you know, you want to beat each other to make the team, but it's not like there's bad blood. It's not like, like I remember specifically the Bill Farrell match when 
I think one of you like was going to go to a different coach or something. There was like an ounce of confusion. <laughs> right, and, here we go, Dan. <laughs> and everybody was we like, both went to the oh, same wait. corner. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we both went to the same corner in between periods. And I, then, like, that was my fault. So I went to the wrong corner. <laughs> well, me and Chenzo, like, like, we, we knew we were going to wrestle in that tournament because right. whether it was in the semis or the finals, like, we just yeah. we knew we were going to wrestle each other. But that didn't prevent us from training with each other the entire week and, like, the weeks leading up. Because, yeah, we, yeah go ahead. No, I was going to say, we practiced together during the week. We warmed up together. We cut weight together, like, three nights that week. So, yeah, we knew we were going to wrestle. We just didn't care. Like, There's and, nothing that's going to, like, there's nothing that we don't know about each other at this point. Mm-hmm. So, like, warming up, like, like we both want each other to feel good and, like, we want to feel confident coming into our t- coming into our competitions and, like, that we want to do the same thing we've done our whole college career, which is train with each other. And that's what's making us the most confident. So, uh that's why we're able to train with each other. I mean, if, if it's like, like I'm, I'm, if I go to the world championships and then I'm not going to wrestle up, I'm not going to warm up with the Russian because we don't, we don't have each other's feel yet. So, but if, if it's my teammate, like I'll, I'll warm up with them because we know what each other do. It's just like whoever. Yeah, sure. get done, so, so you got to take Chenzo to make the world team next year. Mm-hmm. As my partner. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Do you yeah. know, do you have anything competition lined up after these competitions in Russia next week? Or in a couple of weeks, I'll probably go to the Uregan in January. Yeah, um, that's that's my plan Let's for go. now. That that'll be like six weeks. You versus Sitikov would be electric. Is he going to be there? I've heard he was. Yeah, Who I knows? just watched. I, I started watching film uh, on my guys, and uh, I was watching Sabalov, and he wrestled Sitikov, and he beat Sitikov in the Uregan a couple years ago. And I was like, that shocked me. I was like. Because, because after watching Sitikov at the Olympics, I thought, um, and then watching some of Sabalov's matches, um, that shocked me. But uh, just going into a match, like something that Bexod told me um, is like, you just got to like, when you go compete, you have to like, before every match, imagine this is going to be the hardest match of my life. And then wrestle in that way. Because if you underestimate somebody and like, think you're like, sometimes I'll get like, I get in the habit of like, oh, I'm going to go out and tech fall this guy then that makes the match a lot harder. It's good to be confident in yourself, but you also have to be prepared for a fight if it, yeah. if it comes to that. So I'm prepared for a fight. Um, I'm excited to go. I, um, I've, yeah, I mean, I wrestled, I guess your original question, how many international, international matches have you had? I wrestled Canada in Canada. The Pan Ams, Mexico, right? Pan Ams. Yeah. And I wrestled uh, the guy that Bexaw beat for bronze, Kaisenov. I wrestled him in Poland. Lost on the last second uh, takedown. How about uh, you versus? The guy. How about you versus Chimizo on an NLWC Rockfin card? Can we bring no, back no, no, Rockfin no. cards? Whoa, whoa, Bashmania Rockfin card. What are you talking about? NLWC. All right, All right Bashmania Rockfin card. Fine. Whoever's gonna Whoever's gonna pay me more? I do a Bashmania Rockfin <laughs> card. The Bashmania is looking into a Rockfin card. The problem is, is we have to work already have budget. a budget. <laughs> we do already have a match list. That's no. I have, like, <laughs> I have a match list of matches I want, and we're probably going to get a lot of them. And I can add Jason Noel, Frank Chimizo to that list. I just need. Well, I, would, I would be Frank on there. Chimizo. It would not take uh, you. You wouldn't have to twist my arm for that one. What were we watching that we started putting Super. matches together for a card? It was like a grudge card. I forgot yeah, what we're watching. We want to do a grudge card, but then it turned into me just putting all the California RTC guys on it and making matchups that I wanted to see. And we said it'd be cool to have guys like wrestle, like guys wrestle alumni. So a Penn State grad wrestle a current Penn State guy. Or you have Burroughs wrestle, you know, Mike Labriola, somebody who's currently wrestling. Like it'd be cool to have that. And then I think maybe Luke Gardner suggested Roman versus Nico. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. Nico's on his. I want, Nico's I want, on his way back. He is. On I his saw way him back. at Morgan McIntosh's wedding this weekend. He said he's coming back at sixty-one. So he's so been saying that lie. for a I year. Thought talking, I thought you were talking about Nico Provo. Mm. No, I've never even. I don't even. Who's that? Stanford recruit. Great kid. Oh, Nico Provo. Yeah. No. Luke you're talking wants, about Nico Megalutis. Correct. Nico yeah. Mega Lutis versus Roman Bravo Young. That'd be all funny. right. So, oh, we lost Chenzo. He said his he said his card is spotty or his internet's spotty right now. 
All right. Joins back. Um, Okay, so that's cool. A couple other things we'll talk about. We'll see where Chenzo hops back in. Um, Tomorrow's obviously Thanksgiving. We're going to release this episode tonight. I'm curious for you. You've always been somebody who's really grateful for things. Where's your current level of gratitude in wrestling? You know, Thanksgiving obviously makes people think about gratitude, gratefulness. You've had an amazing career you're grateful for. Where's your gratitude level at now? And where do you try to keep your perspective on gratitude when competing? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just talking to the Penn State guys, like where I think some of them are putting some pressure on themselves. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, they're trying to live up to somebody else's, you know, status or another person's record or anything like that. I'm like, man, you have a chance to wrestle for Penn State. And like for me, I have a chance to represent basically Penn State and the Nittany Line Wrestling Club and Coach Kale yeah. and Coach Casey, everybody. Um, so to be able to make a career out of doing what I love, like I, I just keep I just keep thinking about this. Like um, when I when I was going into college, I'd imagine like when I pictured myself after college, I was pictured myself doing extra schooling to become a doctor or a chiropractor, or, you know, working a job. Shout out Matt McCutcheon. Yeah, shout out Matt McCutcheon. <laughs> just a little um, bit, not a ton though. <laughs> yeah, and now like being able to like wrestle and you know do this as a career and then eventually get into coaching uh it's really cool like i'm just like super blessed to have put myself in this position and like i thank god for for putting me here uh and and blessing me with my wife and uh with all the people that are around me couldn't ask for a better group of guys i mean chenzo could beg to differ at stanford there but uh you know I, i love i love the penn state family i love everybody here um it's just really cool. And when, the, when you first started talking about gratitude, I, uh, I just sent my two contractors that I've worked that have worked with my house. Uh, I just sent them happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for you guys that you guys worked hard because and I, I've had some, some sketchy, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> sketchy in case, in case they watch this, but <laughs> no, it's okay. Call you can, off. you can, you can say it. Yeah. That's what this um, is for. This is for all my, you ball. Uh, people out there, don't be. Well, they're not sketchy. They're, they're nice guys. I, but I my, know what my you mean. Floor is, my floor is supposed to be done in my basement before September, and now we're getting close to December, and we're getting Airbnbs people coming in, and the floors aren't done. And Unbelievable. So, I, so I just I messaged the people that have done a good job in my house. It's like the, the, the this guy Ralph. He built my kitchen in two days in my basement. Ralph's the man. And, the man. and yeah, and uh this other guy dan they they went through and they got so much work done in like a month to where like my house was ready to live in and now it's taken you know these other contracts and i know they're busy and they got other things going on but it's been about three or four months trying to get a floor put in on a basement and uh so i messaged them i actually am pretty frustrated right now because we airbnb at our house last night and i stayed at a friend's house uh (laughs) And, and the floor your, wasn't did you, done. Pay, did you pay your friend? Uh, no, I didn't pay him. My, I, I went home to my dad's one weekend, my mom and dad's, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna charge eight hundred bucks for for tonight." <laughs> <laughs> you're making money Fair. for the Michigan game. But uh, the Airbnb, I've, I've this is the fourth time of Airbnb in my house. The first three, I got all five stars. Everybody's had great reviews. Um, everything's gone really smoothly. This time, I just checked my phone literally five minutes before we got on for Bash Mania, and I almost wanted to throw up. I didn't want to get on the call. <laughs> I was like, "What happened?" They left me a two-star review. Said, oh. "Honestly, I'm super disappointed in in this place. Uh, it felt like we were living in someone else's home. There was clothes in the drawer. There was a dog bed. There was uh, food in the fridge, in the pantry, and." That's just, and they're like, this is, I've never stayed in an Airbnb like this before. And I messaged the lady back. I was fired up. I was <laughs> What'd like, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Read it. Read I messaged it. back. And, and, and the way Airbnb works is uh, you, you can't read the person's review before you leave the other person a review. So I left her a review of five stars because Maddie said that I haven't even been home since yet. I just came straight to ATT this morning. But uh, Maddie said that she had left the house pretty, pretty clean. So I was like, all right, let's give her a five star review. Cause like, that's like what you do as a human being, you give people five star mm-hmm. review for sure. Unless it's like, 
like my house I'm, is nice. Like if you're gonna leave LG it throws up in your Uber, you get five stars. <laughs> yeah. Like you just get five star reviews. That's what you do. Like you help other people out. Like you don't That's give what somebody we do. A, you don't we give do. somebody a two star review on mm. on Air, Airbnb. Like that's unbelievable to me. I was that's fired when, up. That's when power gets to your head. I yeah, I've been I in, agree. I've been in oh, crap. the digital marketing world for the last 15 years. And one of my biggest gripes is the review system because it's such a scam. One of my clients, um, an employee, I don't know how much I can say this, but they basically fired an employee. They were a terrible employee. And the employee went on and started leaving negative reviews. Complete yeah. lies. Just And you oh, can't crap. fight it. You can't dispute it. You can't delete it. Nothing. And so few times people go on and leave positive reviews just for the heck of it, that when you go on and negatively impact the business, you're hurting them. But people are yeah. so quick to just leave. I hate it. It's the biggest scam out there. The re online review system. I agree yeah. completely so, too. Yeah, I agree. My, no my one leaves good reviews her, unless they have to. Yeah. My message to her, I'm like, well, first of all, if you don't want, if you, if you didn't like it, just don't leave a review. Like don't, yeah. don't hurt me as a person. Like that's digging deep into my core. <laughs> like me and Maddie are like, we're like, we're trying to like make a living out of this. Like where this is like, this part of our side hustle where we're trying to like Airbnb our house. Like we're literally leaving our house. And I messaged her. I said, hi. And I was polite. Hi, Alicia. I'm sorry that you were, I'll just call her out. Alicia, whatever. She lives in New York. I'm damn Alicia. She lives in New York. Come on, Alicia. What's, what's your address? Come on, Alicia. She lives in New York. So. Alicia you know, New York. New York, I hope York you're people, listening to this. Uh, New York people can be sketchy sometimes. No, no, no disrespect to Jay. No, Jay I, Bash. I, I, JB. I agree. Especially I Rochester she's actually, people. She's actually from Rochester. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, you yeah, have. So. You probably know her, <laughs> Alicia from Rochester. Does she, does she have a profile picture? Yeah, short hair. You gotta uh, send me the profile picture. I don't. There's a good shot. I might know who she is. Rochester's yeah. small. Like, it's not yeah. like. Alicia from probably Rochester. Seen her, probably seen they her were, in the grocery store before. They were, they were bringing their kids for a college visit. There was nine of them. There were two families. So two families of five and four. Um, I said, hi, Alicia. I'm sorry that you were disappointed in your stay. My wife and I just started Airbnb, and we've gotten all five-star reviews. Everybody has get li li listed us great reviews thus far. So. We're surprised to hear this. Um, we do actually live in our home. Uh, so that's why there's like clothes there and food in the fridge. But like we left them space in the fridge. Like we left a whole shelf for them. I know like th like they're staying there one night. What do they need more than one shelf for? Uh, good point. So, okay. Yeah, that's good. What, what, like one, we, we can't one afford. Night, that's a good point. We, it's a week. We can't afford, I didn't mention this, but we can't afford to just throw all of our food away. For one every night, a, for, yeah, <laughs> one for night. one night. Every time there's a guest coming, so I was like, "We do actually live there, but uh, and we've never heard this complaint before, ever. Like it's been the same ever. That's why we haven't changed it up." And I said, "If you could give us some examples on some Airbnbs that you've stayed in that uh, could help us with our business, we'd greatly appreciate it." And I said, "Thanks again," but I was like, "Come on, like you feel like you're staying in somebody else's home, like." You think you that we don't live there? Like, obviously, we live there. That is our home. It is an Airbnb. It is literally a rental. And Chenzo, mm -hmm. to bring you up to speed, this all started because I was asking Nolf about gratitude because okay. tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so we were talking about gratitude. And Jason, I'm so it's, thankful. it's funny you said your contractors because we're still slowly doing work at our house, and we're, like, doing our front yard, backyard, closet, stuff like that. And I literally just texted a guy who – I can tell he wants to make more progress, but the weather has not cooperated. So I'm like, dude, I like he gave me an update before he left, just before we hopped on here. And he's like, I know it doesn't look like much. I'm like, no, dude, I'm grateful for you. Like the fact yeah. that you're making progress and you're out there working hard and it's 30 degrees out there. Like, I'm grateful for that. Trust me. Cause I've looked at like the work that needs to be done with no progress. This is night and day. Super grateful for it. So it's funny. You mentioned that. I did the same thing. I tried to, when we were building the house, I constantly tried to pray for everybody who was working at the house. And I tried to continually express gratitude to them because these guys are blown away. Like the good contractors don't hear it enough that they're actually good. Yeah. It's wild. So I, there are not, they're not that, that many good contractors out there. Correct. So, so when you get somebody like you gotta hold on to them and, and honesty is big too. Like, uh, something with like the flooring is like, yeah, we can get this done. And then it's not done. 
So that's yeah. something that really frustrates me. And like Dan, I asked Dan if he was able to like do our floor and stuff. And he goes, I'm not going to be able to get it done. And like, I respected that honesty. Yep. Like if I you're not going to be able sure. to get it done, don't tell me you can't, you, you can get it done. Like I'll try to find somebody else who is more available to get it done. So like honesty is like one of the biggest things. Like, like if you're not honest, that's just disrespectful yep. in my no. opinion. I don't know. I agree it's, because it's pretty dishonest if you're not honest. And a lot of contractors bad. don't know how to communicate. I have no. guys sometimes just show up one day and not show up the next. I'm like, wait, you're here today? I had no clue you were coming. Like, not communicating. So that's all. That could be a whole episode of the podcast. Just yeah. contractors. <laughs> Con- yeah, let's set this aside for next so, time. So I have a great contractor, actually, that's working on my house at uh, in State College. Um, he's not a contractor. He just does some handyman work every once in a while. His name's Adam Lynch recommend giving him a call if you ever need anything yeah i know done. that guy yeah he uh he's super speedy super quick and gets the job done in an excellent manner he's the one so, doing the work at your house he, he's done some work on my house yeah i love that that's he's awesome done, he's done a little bit yeah jason you mentioned that you're talking uh-huh. to the penn state kids about gratitude what is the vibe like right now in state college on a college level i don't know i'm not like i'm, I'm not as tightly knit with them they kicked me out of the group chats you know, uh, about time, I'm, about like, time. I'm like, an, I'm like an old guy now, but, uh, I have a couple yeah, dude, of you're, friends. Like, you're 26. Way, I wonder you're 26. If, could you imagine wrestling in college at 26 years old? That's my next topic. We're going to get to that in a second. <laughs> I'm but, only 25. I, I'm only 25. I can oh, you're 25. 25 you're 25. You're 25. I forget. You're 26. In I'm January. 35. So you know how old I feel? I told the guy yesterday who's also 35, like in 15 years, I'm going to be 50. He said, no, you're not. I said, dude, I got news for you. So are you like, you're my age. Like you That's need funny, to reconcile yeah. with this. Um, yeah, I, I think, think like, I, I want to click, the, like clickbait that for the caption of this episode, like Jason Nolf got kicked out. Dot, 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 at state college. No context. Just clickbait it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, I think the vibe's good. I think it's just like a little bit different of an atmosphere than mm-hmm. when we were there. I think so. so um, heard. Yeah. I don't know if it's like, yeah, I don't want to say anything like it's not like disrespectful or anything. I just think like everybody kind of has their own group now where when we were in college, like everybody was together and like, and you know, you we kind of see people like secluding themselves and like, you know, so, you know, I think like, I think our mindsets and like, if you're talking about overall vibe, I think I like the vibe. I think we have good mindsets. I think people are ready to compete. Like people want to win bad. Um, People don't, I don't think people want to pin as much as they used to. I've noticed that. Yeah. Uh, so I think like that's something I'm trying to implement into our guys is like, hey, like look for cradles here, look for cement yeah. jobs here, look for this here. Uh, and I'm that every day because you can end matches in, you know, conserve energy. Like if you can end a match, especially like in nationals, like you need pins. And na- last year at nationals, we didn't get any pins. And I think that's like, I think that's really important. So that's something I've, I've been trying to help the guys out with. And someone I've been really impressed with is Max Dean. Like, I think he's made big growth since I he's got him to mean Max Penn Dean. I, I agree. And I could see like, that was going to happen. He's cutting people into tie ups. He's snapping mm-hmm. down, like looking for the cradles. He hasn't really got them a whole lot yet, but he has, he well, has three tech falls. Um, he yeah, reminded me, he reminded me of Zane the other night. Yeah. He looked good. And that, that guy he wrestled, I think was ranked like 20th in the country. Uh, or something, something along that lines. Uh, so, like, it wasn't like a, a turd ball. He was, you know, tech falling. So, I think the more we can get into, like, just, like, an attitude of, like, going out instead of trying to win, trying to dominate and get tech falls and pins, I think our mm-hmm. team's going to just keep, keep getting better. And, you know, it's just part of it is just trusting in our coaches and our and our staff to get that done and the guys at the RTC to help the, guy, to help the college team out. Um, but – you know, right now we're a little bit of a new of a team. We have some new guys in the lineup, so I think they're just adjusting right now. But by the time Nationals comes around, we're going to be ready. And, you know, other teams are going to be tired and wanting the season to end. We're going to be excited and spirited and uh, ready to go. So I think uh, I think we're looking good to win a national title this year. I agree. I agree, I agree too. Um, I got to... The Cardinal isn't quite ready yet. Give us some time. No, it's on deck. Yeah. We do have some hammers. We really do. And I keep trying to tell them, too, that, you know, wrestling is way more fun if we're threatening the other guys back. Um, 
not just from a standpoint of pinning guys, but people would just give up, you know? Um, yeah. I've never been so excited about Stanford wrestling that I, than I am right now. I appreciate that, man. I mean, I'm pretty excited. like a whole new team. I'm pretty excited too. Yeah. I, I mean, I, people, people are giving us compliments, you know, are we're wrestling hard, right? We're, we're in almost every match. Um, we've gotten blown out a few times if we're pretty, you know, if, if, uh, if it's a, that big of a mismatch, then yeah. But if, you know, if our guys can compete, they're right there in the match. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah. You know, they're wrestling hard. I spent however much money I spent to watch a terrible feed on ESPN Plus of Cornell Stanford just because of you. <laughs> so, like, my, my man, you know, you could have <laughs> just drove an hour and a half. I, hour 45, but I didn't want to drive home at night. That's the only thing. Oh, my bad. My bad. So that's right, the well, only. Hey, look, so I do have a few things written down that we could go over. Um, I do want to do a Thanksgiving draft where we draft a meal, where we draft a meal, which would include one main entree, one side, one beverage, one dessert, and a little extra flair here, one Thanksgiving Day activity. All right, I'm down. I need I three you, sides. You need three sides. You just get one. This is oh. like your this is your top. This is his super the Bowl. category. This, this is like, all, all, right, right, so all right. What are we starting with, Entree? So yeah, we're gonna go. Um, we'll have Justin. You start. All I'll right. go second. Jason, you go third, and we'll do snake draft, right? So you go first, I go second. Jason goes third, then Jason goes fourth, and we're doing one meat, one entree, one side, one beverage, one dessert, and an activity. All right, Thanksgiving en- Day activity. Entree, smoked turkey. Turkey smoked on a Traeger. Smoked turkey. Smoking the turkey on a Traeger instead of in the oven. It's amazing. I got a turkey brining right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to put it in the Traeger for three, four hours, smoke it at like 300 degrees. It's going to be amazing. How long do you have to brine it for? Like, could I go get a turkey right now and make it tomorrow? Yeah, I'm brining it for 24 hours, but you could brine it for like 12, You don't have 18. that kind of time. Got to be 24 or nothing. Wow. I I don't think last year I brined it for 24 and it came out really good. Cool. So you can still do it. Is my entree next? My next pick? I, I'm number two, man. <laughs> See, here's Dang. the thing for Thanksgiving. There's only two main entrees. And, you know, mine is going to be a honey-baked ham. So if you guys draft those, I can't you, draft turkey or ham. You can. You I mean, if you cook it differently, yeah. But, yeah uh, I, you guys, I wasn't going to do either anyway. There you I go. Do wow. All right. All right. Let's <laughs> my my main entree? entree is garlic mashed potatoes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that for your main entree, you get garlic That's mashed potatoes. That's my entree. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm wouldn't not do, you wouldn't let me do sides. You wouldn't let me do more than one side. So I'm. I would rather eat mashed potatoes than turkey. We might need to start a poll on Twitter for that. My father-in-law makes great, I, great garlic mashed potatoes. I'm you, looking so forward to those tomorrow. Turkey is either hit or miss. Turkey is either like unbelievable or not good, I think. I hate turkey. I love the turkey I've done the last couple of years in the Traeger. It's really yeah. good. All I'm right, having so a no, time on here, guys. This is fun. Now you pick your side. Now you pick your side. So now is you're, first, my again? Uh, you're first yeah, for side. Yeah, you're first oh, for side. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Green bean casserole. Oof, that's what I was going to rip. I green like the green bean, bean casserole. casserole. Green bean does casserole. not it does not get the respect it deserves. So it many doesn't. people think it's like overrated. It's underrated. It is hundred percent underrated. You just put a little salt and pepper on there. It's it's like the best. Yep. If I could just if I could have two things to eat for Thanksgiving, it would be mashed potatoes and green bean casserole. Yeah, I need to start make them all so. together. Yeah, Chandler, you great. gotta go slow because that was my side. <laughs> so like, all right. Well, my side that that was it. Now, those were actually my two top sides. My number yeah, three side is going to be – my, my, uh, my side is going to be stuffing. I mean, not, that's just I'm, easy. I'm not a big stuffing guy. It, it's stuffing. If it's good stuffing, it's good. Stuffing bad stuffing, stinks. Bad. Stuffing you guys stinks. are wrong. You hashtag guys are wrong. stuffing stinks. If you're listening yeah, to this and you agree, can you tweet out hashtag stuffing stinks? That's 100%. our Thanksgiving hashtag. Whatever, whatever, guys. It tastes like I'm eating, like, possum hair. <laughs> I feel like I'm eating like a dried possum. I've never had dried possum, so I can't wow. tell you. Yeah, that's a bold comparison. <laughs> I like it though. My side's gonna be an interesting right, one. I'm curious because I'm a big carb guy. My side is gonna be buttered rolls. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love right? buttered rolls. 
All right. And you know those little ones I'm talking about. Those little, those little dinner rolls you cut in half. You put the, the Hawaiian on. Yes. Right. Yeah. The Hawaiian rolls. Yep. 100%. That's the side. I would rather have those rolls over stuffing all day. All day. You guys, I like, you guys, that's like more of like a, you know, that, that's an appetizer type of thing. Roll. That is an appetizer. Yeah. The that's roll? like, that's what you eat before dinner. But I mean, mm. whatever. I mean, if mashed potatoes are an entree, then stuff. Then you know, rolls are definitely. A side I want to. I I put the roll on the plate, and I put a little piece of turkey on the roll, and I make like All a right, mini you can put, sandwich. You can dip your bread in butter. In the gravy. You can do that in the gravy and the mashed potatoes. Yeah, that's good too. Mm. Unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, I can't. I don't eat bread right now. I'm a uh, grain free. So, yeah, it's a good way to so, be. I'm not. You can't tell. Um, I need to be. <laughs> I need to be also. Well, I don't know how you get these. Oh, I don't know how. You, okay, that's, there's something in the way, but I don't know how you get these biceps. You know, <laughs> eating bread. So this video is now exclusively going on the premium channel on Rockfin. <laughs> yeah, that. I don't really, I don't really have biceps, and I eat bread. So what's the next one? And do All I right, go beverage, now? Be- beverage, you're up. Red wine, Pinot Noir with turkey. It's perfect. That's that's the perfect Thanksgiving beverage all right yeah i mean i'm gonna have to go with <laughs> an, i'm gonna have to go with an october fest beer because you know i'm uh i'm retired now and i can drink beer on thanksgiving so october fest <laughs> i want yeah that's funny <laughs> now that you're retired okay. uh, so i want i want you guys to guess my drink chocolate milk that, that, that it's either chocolate milk or water I was gonna say water. You got You gotta yeah, go water. chocolate milk. You gotta go chocolate yeah. milk, dude. This is a yeah. You don't want to be. You don't want to be. I don't really drink chocolate milk a whole lot of, anymore either because that's a lot of sugar. But you mm-hmm. know, I'll have to. I'll have to pull out the chocolate milk for for this Thanksgiving. A specific I don't brand. Have a problem with that. Uh, a specific brand, Gallickers. Okay. Shout okay, out Gallickers. Have Gallickers. Nope. Mm-hmm. Gallickers is maybe a Pennsylvania brand, but uh, it's great. Yeah, it's the best. We have Wegmans. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Yeah, I know nope. Wegmans is. I know Wegmans is. I took a, I took, I took my man G Baby to Wegmans whenever we were at uh, we were in Ithaca a few days ago, and he was like, it was like a whole new world for him. Dude, like, I've never seen a I went to the one in Rochester. It was built in Rochester, right? That's where the, yeah. that's where the original Wegmans are. Yeah, I went to that one. It's massive. There's like 20 around here. There's so many. Like from my house, I can probably go to two or three within the same exact driving distance. Like it's nuts. One of my That's first cool. jobs was working in the Wegmans warehouse. Awesome job. I wish I still worked there, to be honest. Our right. Wegmans <laughs> have like the best uh, customer, they, they, the, their employees love working there. Yeah, it's like one of the best places, top 100 to work about, for in like, the country. I heard that about like Whole Foods too. Mm. Yeah, Whole Foods I don't know if that's true or not. Not as good as Wegmans. true or not, but no. that's what I've heard. Nobody touches okay. Wegmans. <laughs> no one touches it. <laughs> All right, so... Um, yeah, now you got dessert. Is it me? Yeah. It's you. All right. Here's my dessert. If I were to go to dessert, I'd get a nice warm brownie, and I'd put probably like six or seven scoops of vanilla ice cream on top with, with chocolate syrup, and then just eat it like that. <laughs> brownie with ice cream. Yeah, yeah that that's a, sound that's pretty a double, good. That's a double dessert right there, but... I mean, you can't do the brownie without the ice cream, and I mean, I you agree. can do the ice cream. You can do the ice cream without the brownie, but but you know, just put to do them that. Together. I yeah. put them together too. Hmm. Now it's my turn for dessert, and like I could go super basic, which I've been going pretty basic. You know, I'm trying to stick to the actual Thanksgiving basics here. Right. So I'm not gonna go pumpkin pie. Because I think it's okay. I like I'm pumpkin gonna, pie. So do I. But I also like pecan pie. We're going to go pecan pie. Never had pecan pie. It's okay. It's not bad. I've never had pecan pie or pumpkin pie. I'm not what? a big pie guy. Yeah, but there's one you're type 35 of... years old. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Dude, you're in 15 years, you're going to be you can't 50. can't just try a piece of pumpkin pie. And you've never pie. had pecan or, <laughs> never had no. pecan or pumpkin pie? Pumpkin like is way more common than pecan pie. If I'm around a pie, the only pie, I, first of all, I've, I'm getting dessert, which I only get like maybe twice a year. I'm not a big dessert guy. Neither, neither it's, am I. it's the brownie with vanilla ice cream or a molten lava cake with vanilla ice cream. That is the play. 
The only other pie I like is like a Reese's peanut butter pie. Is that your choice? Yeah. Hundred percent. Reese's, Reese's, Reese's peanut butter pie. I'm writing all this down, by the way. Yeah, Reese's peanut butter pie is the move. And Reese's actually came out with like a massive pie this year for Thanksgiving, and it a sold Reese's out like instantly. Pie, right? Yeah. A Reese's That's pie. Right. And it sold out like instantly. Is it actual pie or is it just a massive Reese's cup? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, now we're getting it. All right, I'm it's, changing mind the giant Reese's cup. It's like a Reese's cup, but it's a pie. Is it made of pie stuff? No, it's made of Reese's cup stuff in the shape of a pie. That's so a bit that's a bit extreme. So it's just a giant that's a, that's a like that'd be like eat a piece of pie would eat like eight Reese's cups. Correct. Ooh, that's, that's incredible. Like, that's, that's too much Reese's cup for me. The two Even things I was me, maybe. the two things I was mad about in the last month they were sold out about because you can't get anything right now. Everything's back ordered. But the two things that frustrated me were one that the Reese's pumpkin or the Reese's pie peanut butter pie was sold out. Two is they released. Looking at this up. Two is they released a Home Alone Lego set and that sold out instantly too. And I would have liked to get that. Because Home Alone's the greatest Christmas movie ever, so I would have liked to to get that. Um, Chenzo, what's next? The activity? Activity. I already know what my activity is going to be on this Thanksgiving, and I can't wait. I have two activities. I'll have to pick one. Yeah, pick mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I'll say watching football, especially because the especially because the Bills are tomorrow night. Like. I'm planning that was going to be more specific that, than that, but yeah. We host Thanksgiving, and I'm preparing like a first course tomorrow at three, and then a second course for the Bills game at eight. Wow. But my backup idea was the last three years, we've decorated our tree on Thanksgiving, but we didn't do it this if, year. So I had to go I through the that. course. That's we cool. didn't do it this year. That's fine. That's eligible. We did. It is eligible. I did watching football. That's my official pick. See, I was gonna, I was gonna be more specific, and I was gonna say watching the Saints expose the Bills as frauds. Um, more wins than the Steelers. We got dude, more ties. Like, we do have more ties, <laughs> and and we have more win. We have more wins over Buffalo than Buffalo has over Pittsburgh. That's that's true. But the Bills are gonna make it to the playoffs. Steelers. You guys want to hear something funny? Yes. I Patriots are story. gonna win that division. That's. Funny. I gotta tell this story. <laughs> that, was, that is funny, right? It. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was watching the Steelers game on Sunday against the Chargers Sunday night. Brutal We're down game. 17. I'm the biggest optimist you will ever meet in your life. I know you are. <laughs> I'm like, the Steelers are going to win this game. We go into the fourth quarter. We're down 17. We come back. They should have. They should have. We, we get up by three. Like, and that doesn't mean like the chart, the Chargers scored and we're still up by three. And right. uh, there's like a minute where well, there's a minute and a half left. And they throw that touchdown and I'm like, unbelievable. I was so mad. I went up to bed, turned the lights off. Didn't even say goodnight to Maddie. She comes, <laughs> into bed, comes into bed. I'm like pouting. I'm like, she's laying there. She's like, why are you so mad? I'm like, stayed up all night. Steelers can't Damn get st- done. Damn like, Steelers can't we, get we come done. all the way back. We come all the way back to lose. We literally, they did. We, they did. We, we, we did everything. We did everything the best we could. And then we still lose that game. I'm like freaking out. Like I start punching the bed. I'm like, <laughs> does like, she understand the sports tilt? Like, does she no. understand, or does she just think you're crazy? She thinks that was I'm a crazy. Huge game too. That I'm was a like, huge game. Yeah, I mean, we we have a we have a bigger game next week against the Bengals. So mm-hmm. that's a big division game. I think mm-hmm. like I think we just gotta we gotta beat the Bengals. We gotta beat the Ravens. Um, I think we play the Vikings. They need but, TJ Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick back. Are they that back? Hurts them. I said they need him back. I think Minka will be back. I don't know about what. Yeah. So I'm so I'm like I'm like like punching the bed. Matt, he's like, you're acting like baby right now. Stop. Like she starts getting <laughs> yeah. on me. I'm like, Yeah, I am. And I'm like, I have this fire in my belly where I'm just so mad. And I'm like, I can't sleep. She's like, All right, let's pray. So <laughs> she prayed over me and and then I was able to fall asleep. But I was like, Beautiful. part of it was like kind of like trying to be theatrical. <laughs> and part of it was like serious. It's definitely but, a combination. Uh, after, uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta, I'm, mean, you gotta let her know like that. It, that it means something. Do you guys know who Jersey Jerry is? No. 
Chenzo Dio. Am I supposed to know who Jersey Jerry is? He's a diehard Steelers fan. He had a video go viral a couple of years ago when the Steelers, I forgot what happened, but he, he had this wild video that he was going to kill himself. He told his wife, don't ask me to do nothing, dishes, nothing. Barstool just hired him. So really? he's, been on, he's been on some of the streams during the Pittsburgh games. I'm going to send you guys a clip as soon as we hang up. It was when the Steelers fumbled, I think, last week in overtime. It was the funniest thing. I was dying. Was but that's how I was on Sunday. I literally, I turned the Bills game off at halftime, pouted, went upstairs, started painting in our master walk-in closet that we have contractors doing. I said, no, I cannot watch this game. I need to do something. I opened his paint. I texted the contractor and said, I'm sorry. I'm just going to start painting. And then, of course, like a little child, like even once I pouted, walked away and turned it off, I put it on my phone. <laughs> that's, yeah. like, that's not really watching it. So I put it on my phone in the window. But it's the worst. The Bills, I have no confidence going into tomorrow against the Saints. I, hey, here's the thing. I, I wouldn't either. I'm looking at the Bills schedule from this year. They have zero good wins. Well... They, they had the Chiefs, the Chiefs before the Chiefs remembered how to play football. I mean, they have. And the football team before Taylor Heineke. I was at uh, I was at the Chiefs game when they played the Bills, and the Bills smoked them. Oh, were you really? Had, yeah. The Bills at different times are the number one offense and the number one defense in the league. They're just not consistent. They're not frauds. They're just not consistent. They're slightly fraudulent. Well, we'll find right. out tomorrow. So to we'll get back. Find- to get back to the draft here. Oh, man. My, see, my activity was going to be watching the Bills get crushed. Um, you used two different but, adjectives. You know. That's not very nice. You used exposed and crushed. You got to pick one. <laughs> Expo- they get exposed, like exposed. By, getting, <laughs> by, getting, by getting whooped. Um, they're getting – yeah, I, I forget how to say that. Um, my activity, dang. Like, what do you do on Thanksgiving? Are you playing a turkey bowl sometimes? Turkey. I mean, or Is that your choice? Because that was my choice. I, I'm thinking either Turkey Bowl or like, yeah, I don't go Black Friday shopping. So Turkey Bowl, got to be the Turkey Bowl. I'm like, you know, instead of sitting well, and watching. Well, you said you were going to actually do it. Were you, were you talking with the Bills game? You said you were excited yeah. for the football activity or the activity because it was something you were actually going to do. Was that before I said the football oh, thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was something I was actually going to do. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go to the Turkey Bowl. I wish I was playing a Turkey Bowl tomorrow. Um, it's been a few years since, you know, I was able to, to do that. But, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, – When was the last the pig, time you did a Tossing turkey the ball? pigskin around? It's been a few years. And who was in the game? Just some of my friends back home. Was it in State College or Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Was Luke Gardner there? No, it was not. <laughs> okay. Luke Gardner was not there. <laughs> Luke Gardner played in the same turkey bowl as me. I'd be – I'd make sure that I was covering him. <laughs> not, I love – Not catching any passes. I love playing football. I want to play a turkey bowl so bad. That was going to be my choice. Um, Tomorrow for Thanksgiving, I'm going to be in the wrestling room, you know, getting my workout in in the morning. And then I'm just going to be hanging out with friends. I'd say like hanging out with friends. That's my activity. That's a fair activity. Friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship. Friendship can be a verb. Yeah. Practicing friendship or doing friendship. I mean, that's all good stuff. I have it all written down if we want to, re- you know, release. Like, I think, like a teaser or I something think we like do that. release it. Yeah. All right. That's something we can work on. Are those but all the categories? That's it. That's that's everything. And then wow. the next thing I have written down to, to, to uh, go over is just talking about how the bills are frauds. But we already did that. So I'll just, check that. That well, I'll just check that one off the list. I just love giving you a hard time, man. Um, <laughs> I don't have confidence in the Bills right now, so I don't have much to come back with. <laughs> I, I wish you – I really wish you did because it would be more fun for me. I The fact that the Bills are a five-point favorite tomorrow is ludicrous with how they're playing. It's I wild. I, but here's the thing. They'll probably win by, by like 23 points, though, because they played bad last week, so they'll probably go light it up. They're either going to lose or, or, or they're going to crush them. Not I gonna, think they're, they're not going to win. Or they'll tie them. Or they'll tie them. They'll either win no, or they, they, they could no. tie. They could tie. I think that the if you're betting on it, I think the over is the play. I think they're going to score a lot of points or have a lot of points scored on them. I don't think it's going to be a close game one way or another. I think the Bills did not make excuses 
have some offensive linemen that were out this week. And Josh mm-hmm. Allen had no protection. He was getting pissed Gotta left and it. right. It was just terrible. If we have a couple guys back, my confidence level will rise. And we're hosting, so I can't, like, I like to watch football alone a lot of times because if I get disproportionately upset and beat up the bed, nobody's around. Yeah. With, with, with family <laughs> around, it's a little bit more difficult to act irrational. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I think the Steelers play Sunday. I like close fist. Yeah, Steelers aren't playing. Thanks, Jay. Um, all right, so then we got a uh, not word association. We could rip that real quick before I uh, head off to practice here. Yeah, let's do rapid fire word association. Jason, I don't know if you've done this with us yet. No, nope. I don't think you have. So it's real simple. We each have three words. We tell you the word and you just come up with the very first thing that pops in your mind. All now, right. a lot of people the last couple episodes, last couple times we've done this, they get afraid. So like, for example, Martin Floriani was on here. Chenzo said Christian Piles. He, wow. sat back, he sat back and he just thought and he said, he said, pass. he said, pass. He said pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you we'll, know we'll, 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 we won't get that you know touchy but we'll get a little touchy yeah all right chenzo you well, go first oh man all right this is the first time i actually have mine written down and i'm not rapid fire thinking of my my words to associate <laughs> it with so my first one is stanford all right is it is it to me yeah, yeah so it, you this is uh, all to you this is all to me okay yeah all to you all right, yeah go again. Stanford. Chenzo. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to just say my I name. thought he was going to say wrestling because of my shirt looking at that. that either that or that. I yeah, thought that. I fun. thought new. I, I thought new. <laughs> new program. New. But I was like, I'm Chenzo. Cool with that. That's fair. And with the new. The Phoenix. And with the new. Rise of the Phoenix from the ashes. New is always better. New is always better. I like, I like the old dude. I like the old coaches. I like Jason Brelly. But also yeah, like I've, you guys. Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, Ray Blake were, came in a few weeks ago. He was awesome. I like Ray. Super nice. Yeah. My All first right, word is next word. pizza. Topping. I don't know. That, that was the <laughs> in my head. That was that's the word. Ordering that's ordering it. Right. That's, that's the game. <laughs> but that's the topping. game. It's the first the first thing you think of. That's and what funny. is your what is your pizza topping? It shows how organized uh, you are. Like you're ready to order pizza. What's yeah. order toppings? Yeah, I get mu- I get mushrooms, spinach. Uh, uh, what else do I get? Uh, sausage, Italian sausage, and meatballs. That's a Those crazy order. Toppings. That's, that's a very interesting. I'm pepperoni. That's very dip- I feel like a few years ago you would have been playing cheese pizza. No, I get the cauliflower pizza from Wegmans, and that mm-hmm. cauliflower crust is great. Those on a yeah. Traeger is amazing. Really? Cauliflower crust with olive oil, garlic, ricotta, mozzarella, spinach, and prosciutto. Amazing on the Traeger. Prosciutto. Okay. Yeah. I can get behind that. All right. My next one. Ice cream. Chocolate. <laughs> that <laughs> there was we too are. easy. There we Chocolate. Are. Chocolate. Is that the only type you go for? Well, I thought about the, the, the really, the, the picture I had in my mind was chocolate syrup. But mm-hmm. chocolate was the first word. That's you can but say a phrase. If there's a phrase also, that comes okay. to mind, you can say. I it. also like chocolate ice cream with chocolate syrup. Like that. that like I do whatever there. Yeah. That's what about the twist? From, uh, the classic Henry. twist. Yeah, the twist is good. I like. I like vanilla and chocolate. I like Neapolitan. Rainbow or hmm. chocolate sprinkles. Oh, if it's like, if it's just a plain vanilla cone, I'd rather have rainbow sprinkles. What if it's a twist? It, if if it's a twist. Probably still, well, if there's any type of chocolate ice cream in there, probably chocolate sprinkles. I have something. I'll send you a link to it. It's called Hagelslag. My grandparents used to bring it from Holland. It's Dutch sprinkles. Don't you mean Hagendas? No. Hagendas. Yeah, I know that. It's, no. It's Hagendas. No, it's Hagelslag. It's literally <laughs> chocolate sprinkles from Holland. I just had some last night. Um, my amazing wife ordered some for me. This is the package. Wow. They are the best chocolate sprinkles in the world. That sounds good. I may send you a box just so you have to admit they are. They're unbelievable. The bad thing is, is you, you'll want them every time you want a chocolate sprinkle. Yes, right. I mean. My next word is NFTs. Crypto. That's fair. 
Okay. Yeah. I just learned what an F- NFT was. I was so confused on why these little pandas were selling for millions still, of dollars. I still am very confused as to I why. I still am confused, but they, they, they they're like trading so cards, basically. Yeah. It's collectible. Like digital trading cards. Yeah. Yeah. There might be something coming out soon sure. here about some wrestling NFTs. Ooh. I saw that uh, R- Ross Bendick. Is that his name? No, he's doing something different. I reached out to him about being a part of a project that I'm involved in that I think is going to be amazing. We're doing it really slow because I want to I want to do it right. We'll have a conversation sure. offline about that because there are some things that are going to be. Ooh, we, need still, we still need to talk about whatever you wanted to talk to me about a few weeks ago. I forgot yeah. about that. We're going to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're building a company to get uh, athletes paid. That's what I'll say about right. it now. But right. uh, NIL we'll, we'll athletes will get paid, senior level athletes. Basically, get ready to put some money in your pocket. Beautiful. We'll talk about it then. I keep forgetting. I, I love Everyone, it. Chenzo. I, I, all right, my last one. <laughs> my last one is ASAP Rocky. Freddie Stroker. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What is the context there? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Block. I, uh, I, I still, I'm still, day, I'm still blocked on day, Twitter. It's funnier when Chenzo tells it. You tell it. All right. So, um, we were like either, either like older in middle school or like younger in high school. I don't remember. Um, but like this is whenever Twitter was like first like starting to get big and like a few guys, like I forget how or where, but their name on Twitter was like ASAP something. And, uh, I told Jason, and then he made his, like, ASAP Nolf. And I was like, <laughs> and I said, I, like, tweeted at him, and I said, you don't even listen to ASAP Rocky. And then he blocked me. And I've been, still blocked, blocked, and I've been blocked on Twitter for, like, 13 years. Really? He's still <laughs> yeah. blocked this day. I'm still blocked. because What will it take tweets, to, un- I, what I will it take to unblock him? I've apologized. I've I almost unblocked back. him when he got the job at Stanford. I almost unblocked him. As a congratulations, I think today not is a that good not that what it. I think about him matters at all. Like, I think matter. today is a good day to unblock. You know, it's it's going to be his call. It's going to be Jason Moult's call, no matter what. Yeah. Or Jason, so, you, you at least have to give him criteria to get unblocked. Is there something he can mm-hmm. do? There's not a lot he can do. That that was that was he he passed the line there. What if he sends you chocolate ice cream, <laughs> and I send you Hogglesock? That might that might be that might be grounds for reinstatement. <laughs> Dude, hey, there's this there's this place here called the Salt and Straw, and it has unbelievable ice cream, like best I've had. I'm gonna see if I can ship that a- across the country. Hey, if can I, I can. come out to Stanford and train with you guys for a little bit sometime? Dude, yes, I've been talking to Bo and Anthony. Like, whenever I set them up to come out, like I'm just gonna put you in the group message, and I'll have whoever, like all you guys. Oh, so know. so like I'm like your third friend, third best mm-hmm. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I actually, I asked, um, I asked Kyle and David first. They said no. And Mark McKnight, asked, didn't you ask him? I asked Mark McKnight. He said no. He said no with his pinky sticking out like this. Uh, he said no. Um, no. So now I'm like I just, level six, six or seven. Yeah, six yeah. or seven. No, but um, yeah. well, you blocked him. So you blocked. Him. Yeah, that's true. That's actually, true. Chenzo, no. didn't you like tweet invite him like three months ago? I did. I invited you over Twitter. I tweeted wow. at you and I messaged you. You were the first person I actually. All asked. he said was retweet if you want to come to Stanford and you didn't retweet. So, mm-hmm. are you guys yeah, no, going to bring? We're going to set something out there to that gym because you guys have like Cormier's gym down there, right? Like thirty minutes um, away. We don't have Cormier's gym, but Cormier has his gym like thirty minutes oh, away. Yeah, so they'll they'll yeah they'll definitely go train there. They can go hit AKA too, which is uh, in San Jose. It's like forty That's minutes a great from trip. us too. Yeah. So we'll have a lot of stuff, and you should definitely come. Before we get off, I have to show you guys my high kicks. I got All the, right. I okay, got the. Perfect. Why do I perfect. flip this round? I got the bags right here. I can show you my roundhouse. You know perfect. my high knees. We'll do. Like have you there to record? We'll no, do. I can we'll do my phone down. We'll do my third word, and then Chenzo, you and do three kick. words, right? Yeah, we'll yeah, do my third kick, word. Then, then I got kick. Run. Then you got to run. All right, my third word is John Van Brill. I forgot who that was for a second. <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. That's it. That's I it. forgot that's who it. it is. But no, that's, it. that's, no, that's not my answer. No, His answer answer. Is, I forgot who that was for a second. All right, that's my answer. Now, I'll talk about him. 
He's a nice that kid. is the beauty of this game. Right? He's, a, he's a nice kid. I was like, John Van Brail, Rutgers, uh, he didn't mean to hurt my knee. Everybody's like, oh, this guy's a dirtbag because he tried to hurt my knee. He didn't mean to do it. He was just trying to hold on. I was trying to score. He was trying to hold on. I wrestled him again the next year at Nationals, I think. Uh, it was all good. I have no hard feelings. I think Penn State fans, again, when it talks about the fans being harsher than the wrestler, Penn State fans, definitely. And the atmosphere, from somebody who was watching it, and I think we talked about this, Jason, but from somebody who's like watching it, it did seem like the atmosphere got very hostile. It did get it did hostile, seem- and then Bo called out Richie Lewis or something, and then Richie Lewis called out Bo recently trying to fight him. Yeah, but and Bo said he don't want Lewis, his hands. Richie Lewis tried, like, calling me out after the match. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> I just weird didn't answer. Me, me and Richie are cool, though. Like, I've spoken to him after that. Like, we were, like, he was he was super cool, actually. I don't know why him and Bo are chirping on Twitter. But, like, I think I, it's and funny. It's kind of, and it's actually hilarious. I, I actually went back and watched or showed one of, like, I showed Grant part of that match whenever I got called for an illegal headgear grab when his headgear was around his neck. I like yeah. tried to grab the dude's headgear and like put it on his head. Oh, and, and you got called for and, a point. And I got, yeah, and I got. Oh I got no, I didn't see that. it. I yeah. was laying with my knee in half in the oh, locker room. I, I, I know. <laughs> your mom, your, I, I, I was about to wrestle, and your mom was like out there, just like in the hallway, like crying. And I was like, hey, I was like, he's gonna be okay. Like I'm sure he's like banged my up. My mom was like, crying. Yeah, dude, she was, she was up, she was super upset. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm like that dude's tough as shit. He's gonna be okay. Like, and, and you were wild. okay. Yeah, that was it. That was a wild match. That place was crazy too. Look, like we went, we went to Cornell on uh on Saturday, and you know it was like oh, like crazy environment. There was like twelve hundred people there. Like it was absolutely nothing. Like those Cornell fans were like, yeah, like good luck wrestling here. I was like, good luck wrestling at the rack. I'm like, Rutgers is like at least twice as yeah. crazy as that place. I'm like, even like go to a Big Ten school. I'm like, this ain't nothing. Yeah. Uh, All right. right. I'm going to show you guys my kick and then I'm going to get off. Yep. Let's see the kick. Let me just put, oh my gosh, I've been sitting down for too long. All right. All right. Can you guys see the bag? Yep. Of course. Go to the second one. Go to the second one. Yeah. Yep. That one. Dang. (laughs) I'm, I'm unconscious after that. That one may be a little (laughs) less unconscious. That was a good one. Nice. That looked mean. That's all I got for you oh. guys. Heck wow. yeah. Dude, you that... got some abs. You're looking ripped up. Yeah. 74 plus 3 kilos pounds. is... 74. <laughs> 74 Six, kilos six. plus 3 is looking dangerous. Yeah, sure. it's looking dangerous. <laughs> Not 70. I appreciate you guys. Of course. Awesome. Well, thanks thanks you guys. Me on. We'll do this hey, again Have a happy soon. Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everyone. See ya. And the beat goes on.